Hey, I will show you how you can implement a double camera setup for first person shooters where the gun and the scene are being rendered using different field of views. This is a feature most modern first person shooters have and as an example let's take a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So this is Call of Duty and currently the scene is being rendered using a field of view of 60 and if we increase it to 90 you can see the scene became more zoomed out but the weapon model stays, stayed the same. So if we increase this to 100 or 120 you can see that the weapon still stays the same but the scene becomes even more zoomed out. And this is what we're gonna implement today in Unreal Engine 4. Alright, so let us first now create the project and we will use the first person template for that. And this was gonna be a C++ project and we will name it FOV Tutorial. Okay, and next we will need to create a new C++ component and we will extend the skeletal mesh component. We will just call it my skeletal mesh component. Okay, so after this has been created, we won't be modifying any code as of yet. First, we will modify the FOV tutorial character. And here we want to basically add our mesh component to this character. And we will call it mesh FOV. And it also can be modified through the editor. All right. And in the CPP file, we will copy these three lines. We will place them here and we will replace this with mesh FOV. And we will rename it as well to mesh FOV. And we will need to include the file. This also has to be uh, my skeleton mesh component. And now we can recompile it and we will modify the blueprint for the character. Okay, so this is the default character. We will open it up in the blueprint editor. And here we can see that we have added our skeletal mesh component. What I will do next is, and if you're gonna do this in your own project, you should do something more clever, but I will just move the existing meshes out of the out of the frost term so that we don't see them. And here for the mesh FOV, I will just select the FP gun model. I will rotate it by minus 90 degrees and I will position it in front of the camera. I will hit save and play. And because this doesn't look good, I will adjust the gun in real time. All right, this looks good to me. And now we can start modifying the skeletal mesh component we just created. And the only thing we need to add here is we need to override the get render matrix method. And the idea behind this is that we want to create a matrix which whenever you multiply the current view projection with it, it should cancel out the view projection and it should apply our own view projection with a different field of view. And for this we need three matrices. So we need the model matrix. We need the inverse old view projection matrix. And we need the new view projection matrix. And as a result, we want to multiply the model matrix with the new projection matrix and the inverse old view projection matrix. So this way, whenever we multiply with the current view projection matrix, the inverse view projection matrix cancels out. Because remember, whenever you multiply a matrix with its inverse, it produces the identity matrix. So we will essentially just cancel out this part and we will be left with the model matrix and the new view projection matrix. And next I will show you how we can get all of these values. And for the model matrix, it's super easy. It is just getting the current component transform and calling two matrix with scale. So now if we take a look at how it looks like in engine, we can see that it all still works. And to get to the view projection matrix, I will paste some code to not waste your time. 
And what we are doing here essentially is we are getting the current scene view and the current viewport from which we can get the view matrix and the projection matrix. And here I will declare the desired field of view, which in my case will be, let's say, 60. And we will need to convert this to half radians. I will wrap the current viewport size and I will ex and I will declare the width of the viewport here. The near clipping plane distance, which is contained in the scene view, near clipping plane distance. And now that we have this, we can create the new projection matrix like so f reversed z perspective matrix and we give it the desired half field of view in radians we give it the current viewport dimensions and as the fourth parameter we give it the near clipping plane distance now we have the new projection matrix and next we will need to get the view matrix by accessing the scene view view matrices and get view matrix we can we have to create the inverse view matrix get inverse view matrix and we will need to get the projection matrix and the inverse as well And this is all we need to calculate the inverse old view projection matrix. And for this, we take the inverse projection matrix and we multiply it with the inverse view matrix. And to calculate the new view projection matrix, we multiply the view matrix with the new projection matrix. And all of these can be constant. And we should now have a weapon being rendered with a different field of view. And to verify that it works, we can change the field of view here. So let's put it at 100. Hit play and as you can see, it changed the field of view. And we can change the field of view on the camera here. Let's put this to value, compile. And as you can see, the weapon stayed the same, but the scene changed. And let's go to the other extreme. And as you can see, it worked. Now if we resize the window, the weapon starts to look very weird. There is one easy way to fix this and there's the right way to fix this. I will first show you the easy one and then we will tackle the correct way of solving this issue. Okay, so in the blueprint of the character, we select the first person camera and we want to constrain the aspect ratio. So whenever we resize, uh, the image stays at the same aspect ratio, but still the weapon gets squished. And how we can fix this is, so here we can select the aspect ratio. In my case, I will be targeting 1080p. And in our code, we also will need to change th uh, these values. Instead of using the current viewport dimensions, it should use our target width, which in our case will be 1920. And the, and the target height will be 1080. So we will replace this here. We compile. Whenever we resize the window, the weapon will also get resized accordingly. And now we could probably also restrict the window resizing to respect the aspect ratio so that you cannot create window sizes which are not in the given target aspect ratio like Overwatch is doing, for example. This is all there is to it. I will now continue showing you how you can extend rendering the scene to the left and to the right so that we don't have this pillar box here but we can actually use all the all the screen space we have here